Yes, sir, you are visible, sir. You can. Shall I start now? Yes, sir, you can start. Yes, sir, you can start, sir. Hello. Okay. Good morning. With great pleasure, I welcome you all participants for this uh, one day seminar on Internet of Things in healthcare. I feel grateful in welcoming our resource person, Mr. Bala Prasad Pedigari, for his kind concern. This seminar is focused to transform the essence of IoT in air bath fields. And it is the right time to sprout the highlights of our department. EC is a renowned department in the SR University with well equipped laboratories according to the state of state of art. It also focused by means of experienced and well qualified faculties with varsity in specialization. ECA department have a center of excellence that is center for embedded system and IOTs. Our center motto is providing solution for industrial automation and agri technologies for better efficiency in their productivity to improving the business model and enhancing the customer experiences. Center takes an initiative to build a talent pool of engineering students equipped with knowledge and experience to be industry ready or to start up on their own. Our center has already received the grant from grant of rupees 5 lakhs from new gen IEDC sponsored by NSTEDB Department of Science and Technology for developing the products. Number one, that, that is automatic hand sanitizer system with thermal scanner. And the number two is design and development of automatic wire cutting machine for small scale industries. Our center having industry partnership with Netra, Cloud Chip Technologies Private Limited, Gill Instruments, ABE Semiconductor, Kernel Masters. I am happy in organizing this event, this technical event in correlation with our department and ICT Academy. Once again, I welcome you all for this event and my best wishes to all to have an effective technical transfer experience. Thank you very much. Now I am now I'm, uh, forwarding okay. this session to Mr. Ms. Sridevi, madam. Sir, good morning, sir. Good morning. Good, good morning, all. This is Dr. Sri Devi, Assistant Professor in EC Department at SR University. Now I am profusely elected to take an opportunity to introduce our speaker, Bala Prasad Pettigiri, Chief Product Officer, Tata Consultancy Services. He has total experience for over 22 years. Bala primarily focus is to build future platforms and solutions leveraging modern engineering principles and evolutionary engineering philosophy. He specializes in enterprise cloud architectures across cloud platforms such as AWS and Microsoft Azure, Microsoft Services, Artificial Intelligence, and Business Analytics. Bala was instrumental in digital solution strategy and influence over 200 million USD of business and drive the leadership by driving insurance. His goals are aim high and chase your dreams, drive continuous growth with respect to career, create visibility across technology world, and get recognition in whatever you do. He is a vice chairman at uh, Computer Society of India, Hyderabad chapter, and is a treasurer in IEEE Hyderabad section. Secretary in uh, Internet Society, Hyderabad Chapter, Co-Chair at uh, Information Technology and Digital Communications, FTCCI, 
open group certifying authority board member and board of studies member csc and artificial intelligence department with anurag university vardhaman college of engineering nalamalla reddy engineering college College of Engineering and Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering. His roles in the past: Secretary at I Triple E Hyderabad Section from Jan 2018 to December 2019, and uh, he is a chairman in uh, I Triple E Computer Society Hyderabad Section Jan 2016 to December 2017, and he is a managing committee member Com 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 Computer Society of India Hyderabad Chapter April 2016 to March 2020. Open Group Board India EA member and founding board board member Computer Measurement Group of India and the certifications and credentials are Open CA Master Certified Architect, Tokap Certified, Ma Microsoft Azure Certified Architect, Microsoft ALM Challenge Winner in 2010, Microsoft Tech Ed Top Architect Winner in 2010 and 2009. Microsoft Certified Professional Developer, Web Develop Web Developer Four, Microsoft Certified Solution Developer, Web Applications. His special specialities in certifications are Open Group Certified Master Architect and Togap Certified, Microsoft Certified Business Value Planning Services (MCTS), .NET Framework 4.0, Data Access (MCTS), WCF Net 3.5. .NET 3.5, MCTS, Samos 2007 configuration, Microsoft Office Specialist, Excel 2010, and his specializations are enterprise cloud architecture, microservices, artificial intelligence, analytics, API management, cloud business solutions, performance engineering, and tuning. And he has also published uh, many more journals, international journals, and international conferences. Thank you, sir. I am hand hand overing this session to Mr. Bala, sir. Thank you. I hope my voice is clear and audible. Yes, yes, sir. It is audible, sir. Okay. First of all, thanks to the ICT Academy for setting up this opportunity to speak with SR University students and faculty members. And today, I am going to touch upon some of the key aspects of the Internet of Things. Uh, where we are going to touch on what are the key opportunities and challenges which is really triggering us to look into the different industry verticals. Particularly, we emphasize our thoughts on the healthcare and try to understand some of the point of views in that area. While I get into that particular space, it's very important for me to put down the foundational constructs and understanding associated to the healthcare. So what is Internet of Things? Many of you might be knowing by now. And uh, and many of you might be also knowing about how this uh, healthcare is really making an impact in our uh, daily lives during these pandemic days. So why Internet of Things are becoming very much important, and what is the state of the heart? The IoT is also something we are going to touch upon. And it is very important that how the future of IoT also evolves over the period of time is also something we need to really look at. If you typically look at the digital business today, what is happening is we see that many of the uh, enterprises or our connections with any kind of a, connections and interactions with any kind of entities, like it could be government entities, public entities, or private entities, they are enormously deleveraging the digital business. The one aspect you can always think about is why digital business means now. Touchless, cashless transactions, which are happening, it's all about business driven by the transactions which are operated by the uh, some of the key devices. The phones playing an important role in making those particular transactions, and this is all possible because there is a greater convergence of the different things coming together. People started accepting the change, business started embracing the change. And there are certain specific things which are been created and evolved over the period of time, which is really creating the new set of opportunities for all of us. So, as the digital business is really disrupting and it is trying to create a lot of new business models, 
internet is really uh, expanding their expanding the entire horizons and it is where that you see that enterprises started it is where you try to see that enterprises started adopting e business as a kind of a channel to communicate and collaborate as the business business evolving i'll try to touch upon one important specific scenario here so that you can start understanding how this particular scenario really triggering and paving the way for the iot say for an instance a particular car crash happened in on the road so what are the things which we can play a role where iot can dominantly come into the action whenever a car crash happens you can say that if you have a smartphone which has got a accelerometer accelerometer it can immediately detect that that there is a certain deceleration so when the crash is happening you are in a kind of emotion suddenly your speed comes down the sudden deceleration of the speed could be caused because of an accident or it could cause because of the sudden brake what you try to do it so if it is a, because of the brake everything seems to be proper but if it is because of an accident there would be certain checks you need to perform so a smartphone can start interrogating passenger clothes to understand if there is any vital signs how does it do if the smartphone has got a camera it has an opportunity to detect that and once it detects certain specific things which is little uh, using the computer vision based algorithms it will immediately send the signals to the medical emergency so that they can get the first response system and establish it kind of a communication line for the survivor so this is becoming a one of the important need in the organizations the cars like tesla uh, bmw mercedes benz uh, the all the high end cars are trying to come out with a, such kind of a uh, such kind of a feature sets which was really making the safety as an important measurement for the uh, drivers who are driving such kind of a high end vehicles so again that is from the passenger check angle it is trying to detect but what happens it also has got an ability to interrogate or check about the vehicle damage so the vehicle also the currently many of this many of this high end cars or the uh, the upcoming cars are also coming out with a kind of a vehicle diagnostic systems this diagnostic systems will help in immediately triggering and generating a report understanding the different damages associated to that not necessary for someone to come and inspect it can generate the report on its own and submit that particular report to the different departments who are in need for uh, filing the case taking care of the towing taking care of the insurance aspects and other things over and above if you see that all these things are happening you can also see that um there is a need uh, which keeps emerging that how uh, repairs can be sent to the smartphone and uh, what kind of negotiations can happen so and you can also look at uh, some of the evidences of the car crash look, looking at what has happened within the car and outside the car so just by using the smartphone you are able to detect the passengers vehicle damage able to communicate with the different entities and also collect all the possible evidences within and outside and send it across to the uh, different agencies which are in require over and above you also have an opportunity to send the messages or send the communication to your immediate emergency contacts and if there is a kind of a case you can also file that so you can see a small car crash as for how many such kind of a departments connected together and a specific scenario which is really triggering uh, the different devices to communicate and connect and collaborate with each other if you really pay attention there are different industry verticals playing their role here the first first one thing is about the consumer electronics which is a uh, providing that kind of a car crash technology built into the smartphone the second is a garment which has got an ability to respond to such kind of a communication by enabling the systems of law safety fire and similarly some of the sanitary and clean up people clean up ecosystem the housekeeping job functions to come together the third most important thing is about the healthcare because that's where your first response team which comes to take care of your medical aid and emergency rooms are arranged ahead of your arrival 
and the specialists are communicated about some of the emergency case which is arising. All these things are possible even before you reach that particular uh, hospital. The financial services industry, which is also connected with this particular smart car crash technology where the insurance agencies, banks are immediately informed about the incident. The automotive industry is also plays an important role because they need to build the necessary sensors to analyze the damage control and also understand what are the different safety measures can be redeployed to make it much, much more robust. The retail, so retailer industry is also playing an important role where you see that the smart clothing is becoming an important element of communication. So if there is any disturbance in the clothing, the cloth has got an ability to get diagnosed or communicate back to the sensors. And obviously the law and legal plays an important role while you try to engage with the attorney generals or the lawyers who will be able to fight your case. So you can see how IoT coming together to uh, uh, converge the different industries together to solve a particular problem and make the things out of it. Similarly, if you're really looking across how the amount of devices which are participating uh, in the current and the future would be enormous in nature. And if you look into the intelligent systems which are getting built right from the way you're trying to live in, uh, not only the phone, your television systems, your AC controls, or your smart homes, you can think about your vehicles under which you're trying to drive. Uh, there are more than one point or two trillion dollar uh, business which is getting triggered and the different industries which are participating utilizing the utilizing the benefit of this intelligent systems is quite large and it is running into the billions of opportunities in every particular piece of sector you would take it so as the systems are evolving you can see these numbers are uh, multifolded the way it is trying to grow we can say more than 50 billion devices across the world are connected, but not necessarily that is needed, but there are more than 75 billion devices. People say that will be available by 2020. It's already crossed. In fact, uh, the latest figure says that it is more than 100 billion devices. They've already crossed. It means almost touching one, one, one trillion. One trillion devices are there in the system today. And there are, and there are, there are industries which are trying to propagate and things saying that market will be worth of almost like a almost like if you can see nine trillion dollars of business so the amount of revenue which is there in this particular area is quite high and more intelligently if you can encompass all these things and leverage the different iot device economy you will be able to play an important role when we talk about the IoT, you need to understand there are four different levels of the IoT devices coming into the existence. The micro level, very, very tiny related chips, which is playing an important role, small, mobile, and large level. Let us investigate what are those categories which is playing a role. When you really look into the large IoT systems, you can talk about the point of sale terminals or ATMs, what you might have seen, the MRI scanning machines, which is trying to do the things without touch, scanning the image of the body, all following the specific embedded industry 8.1 standards. And if you're looking into the mobile devices, like all the tablets, phones, smartphones, which is really handheld devices, which are capable enough to communicate and faster way of uh, collaborating with the other devices to communicate. The third aspect is about the small devices like a variables, like you have a Fitbit devices or any kind of a Garmin devices where you're work, wearing on your uh, hand and you're trying to walk, it is trying to count your steps, to measure your heartbeats and other things. So this can also be embedded as part of your cars and other vehicles as well. And it really does not carry any kind of a huge shell, very, very tiny, able to communicate and capture certain some sensor related signals and try to start computing the things. Further to that, you can see there are micro controllers, micro based uh, micro devices in the IoT economy, just like actuators, controllers, and uh, which are capable enough to give you the binary communication about certain elements. It could be a binary communication zero and one, or it could be having a set of uh, numbers which will be able to trigger based on the changes what it tries to observe. 
So there are several frameworks which are available, which is trying to give you this kind of overall perspective of the device economy playing an important role. I just started uh, putting up the kind of a basic constructs by giving you the use case, what is important, how the IoT is playing a role. Let us try to get into the subject area a little more in detail and try to understand what is Internet of Things? How do we try to express that? And how, what are the internet, how IoT can be explained, how the IoT industry sees it? Over and above, it is important for all of us to understand what kind of researchers, uh, research, research aspects are going on. What are the new opportunities which we are trying to see from the IoT? There are a lot of uh, academia, uh, companies, enterprise, uh, multinational companies are investing in it. The venture capitalists are in investing in it. There are government agencies which, which are investing in it. They're trying to build some kind of a standards around IoT where the communication will be seamless and better across the devices so that it is easy for us to communicate. While they, uh, we'll try to look into the state of the heart, it is also very important for our office to understand what is the challenge and limitation associated to the IoT and how the different sectors participating will have a change in thought. That's where we we'll try to look into the healthcare view also. And over and above, we will try to look into the three important laws of which we strive to drive the future of IoT, which you all need to remember as you try to progressively move in that direction. I just want to read out a few of these particular definitions because they are the basic foundational way of looking at the things from the Internet of Objects, what we try to do. Internet of things, what we are trying to look at. Internet of everything people try to look at. So if you go and Google around in any particular way, way of the Wikipedia, it tries to touch upon that IoT is nothing but a wireless network between objects. Usually the network will be wireless and self-configuring such as household appliances. Basically, you're trying to say that I'm trying to communicate between one device to another device without having any, any wired connectivity. And in the World Summit of the Information Society, which happened way back in 2005, almost 16 years ago, they have defined the Internet of Things as like an embedded short-range mobile trans receivers into a wide array of additional gadgets and everyday items, enabling new form of communication between people and things and between things themselves. So most importantly, you see that the devices are not only to communicate between one device to another device, it can be from the machine to machine or human to machine as well, or machine to human as well. Such kind of a scenarios do emerge and it is important that we understand the essence of this IoT playing a dominant role in solving some of the inter, uh, internal problems of what human being is trying to encounter. There are other definitions which has been evolved over the period of time in 2008 and in 2020, uh, more focusing on the technology related and research related disciplines and how they are trying to address some of the real physical object communication. While in 2020, there is a smartness which has been built into the IoT. It's not only about looking into the sensing and uh, analyzing and respond. That is what the SAR framework we try to talk about, sense, analyze, and respond, where uh, devices are becoming much, much more smarter in nature. They not only sense the event which is happening, but it is also becoming intelligent to analyze that particular event and respond based on the kind of a knowledge history which has been programmed within. So there are lot of intelligence pieces which are getting constructed to connect and communicate with an understanding associated to the social, environmental, and user-related context. So that is a basic definitions which you need to be aware of. It will really help you to understand and embrace the technology much, much bit better as we try to move on. If you typically look into the overall history and progression of the IoT, way back in 1997 is where the uh, internet report really originated and propagated about uh, IoT and specifically bringing in some of the key challenges to the network where they feel that the machines need to communicate with each other and it need to reduce the human interventions as much as possible. And for that to investigate and take it forward under the uh, MIT, they have founded the Auto ID Center and then they have conceptualized it to be a EPC Global under the MIT as well. And they have all come together in the World Summit of the Information Society conference, where they have really redefined the IoT and how it need to be propagated back to the community. And the first conference, which held in 2008 in Switzerland, Zurich, has really 
uh, paved the way of bringing in the IoT related use cases across the different industries. So what is in the internet of things and how do I communicate as an end user or how do I communicate to the device? If you typically look at from any time, any place connectivity for anyone, we will now have connectivity for everything or anything I would say. So the, there are three dimensions what you need to really look at. One is the anytime connection. So you should have an ability to communicate with any device at any point of time so that you have an opportunity to understand, right? If you typically look at uh, uh, the, the CCTV cameras, which are installed in the different parts of the city, uh, the, the remote place where the com within the commissioner's office or in the police headquarters, they have an ability to capture each of the CCTV camera feed. Again, wow, how is it possible? It is again possible through the IoT. So they can connect, they can hack, or they can try to reach to any of the CCTV camera on the move or also from a particular location. So that's where the any place, any time is possible. And anything is all about related to the devices. So one device to another device, we should be able to communicate and that human to human, human to thing, thing to thing, are all possible communications that we try to see. So these are the three dimensions. If you try to start uh, understanding uh, anytime, any place, anything connection, is that so you try to conceptualize IoT into the overall context. And if you take any kind of a device economy, we have seen about the four levels, right? Where we touched upon the micro level, small level, and uh, the large level of the IoT device economy. They all encompass specific characteristics. So the most important characteristics one need to be aware of, uh, it is event driven. So whenever there is a specific event, you are not really poll, polling that uh, event to check whether that is event is triggered, but it's an event when, when it occurs, it immediately sends a signal. So devices are listening to that particular signal and immediately senses that, analyzes that and responds. So one of the important characteristics is if the device can sense a signal, fantastic. It's an IoT device. So ambient intelligence is all about trying to bring the context around. So if the device sits in a factory, it has got a different behavior than the device which is sitting in, the, in their home or device which is sitting in there as a wearable. So every device, IoT device which is participating, it need to understand the context and the behavior under which it need to operate upon. If I'm wearing a wearable, say for an instance, and, uh, and the wearable is for a purpose of counting the steps, it is meant for that. It is trying to understand the context of whether I'm walking indoor or whether I'm walking outdoor, looking into the temperature sensors. And if I'm trying to wear any kind of a variable which is associated to the uh, my health related data, it tries to measure my pulse, it tries to measure my saturation levels, it tries to measure my heartbeat, BP. Uh, there are certain devices which can also do the glucometer checking without even the blood samples. So understanding the context intelligence is very, very important under which it need to really operate. The third aspect is about the third characteristics about the flexible structure. The structure does not only talk about the outward appearance of the device under which it's trying to operate and live in, but also the behavioral characteristics, which could be significantly different from one device to another device based on the size and limitations it need to work upon with. The semantic sharing is about the foundational constructs under which you are trying to communicate about the data, what it is generated, how it is analyzed, and how what need to be responded back. Today, many devices are able to communicate using some of the specific IoT 802.1 standards. There are uh, complex technologies which is participating from the IoT angle, and it could be related to the machine-related technologies, AI related technologies, analytics related technologies, unstructured data which gets generated, big data people participating in it. Cloud playing an important role for analyzing and trying to uh, give more the better insights. These are the five important characteristics one need to be aware so that you will be able to embrace why Internet of Things will play an important role in our daily life. The one aspect is very, very key and very, very known to everyone is like, uh, IoT brings a lot of dynamism into the context. It is much, much influential in our industry-related activities or the day-to-day -day activities which is happening in our life. 
and it is most importantly to look at how well you can utilize the resources in fact uh, some of the sensors which are installed in our offices at tcs if they find in that particular location if uh, no people are operating it tries to send a signal to switch off the fan switch off the ac in that zone switch off the lights in that zone so you are able to optimize your resource utilization ratio and trying to improve the things so you are trying to establish a better relationship between the human and nature reduce your carbon footprint and reduce your uh, kind of a different emissions which could really spoil the environment and this intellectual entity participation becomes a very important thing when you are trying to integrate um, the human to physical system integration so you see this aspects playing an important role uh, and uh, trying to drive the change and uh, bring the change which can offer a lot of uh, point to point device to device communications much much more simple and easy configure and that's where uh, many of the research firms are playing an important role in developing the standards which can be reusable accessible and easy to integrate across the chain and if you typically look um, the specific areas of the applications of the iot you now whenever you look into any particular subject one important question one need to be aware is what are the use cases associated to that subject where it will be applied and what are the different industry applications associated to that particular subject and if you typically look at it then you start lo- uh, playing an important role how well i can make and bring a lot of smartness into my entire work culture it could be the smarter vehicles smarter houses smarter offices which are completely driven by the uh, bipolar by sensors uh, and also the equipments which are placed and the environments under which i'm trying to operate it's all connected together to make it happen typically if you have seen uh, um, i don't know whether you have seen a video called amazon go amazon amazon go shop uh very very uh, it really demonstrates the state of the heart technologies and uh, what it does is uh, right they have no people in the sh- store uh, to assist you at all uh, it's completely uh, zero people who manage that particular store everything is driven by the technology right from the entry to the exit everything is taken care in a touchless manner when you go into the store the application which is running on your mobile phone detects that you have entered into the amazon go store and whenever you are picking an item from any particular shelf it immediately uh, detects that item has been picked up by you keeping the sensor technologies in mind and suppose you picked it up and if you want to replace it back it adds and it also subtracts that particular count in the um, very very smart uh, smart shopping and once you finish up your entire shopping you need not pay you just need to walk it automatically sends an invoice to your phone and from your wallet which is linked to the amazon go application it detects the money so the entire from the door scanning and uh, for and when you are trying to pay for the goods everything can be automatically taken care of here in this case it is showing that we are trying to scan but in the amazon go that scan is also not required it manages everything with the rfid tags and manages everything based on the kind of a location that which you are trying to move and work so most importantly whenever the inventory goes down it tries to communicate to the back end staff to f- drive the fulfillment and there are running trays which will be kept from the back stage and in the front stage you will be start seeing those new inventory getting popped up as in when the things are getting filled so that is only the shopping behavior i try to give you but uh, you can look into the healthcare scenario where you are trying to focus on the utilization of your variables uh, trying to generate the patient health data and trying to communicate back to the hospitals to which you are trying to publish your health data for your doctor to look at on a continuous basis intelligent homes is also another important application area where you try to make your home to be a very safe place to live in and uh, it will also help in optimizing your electricity bills and optimizing your resources under which you are trying to operate the transportation is becoming smarter because of the 
we have already seen a lot of autonomous cars playing an important role driverless cars which has been almost tested but not getting permitted at this moment but it is trying to improve the smart transportation and you can also leverage think about the uber ola and other services playing a uh, important role where you try to book a particular cab from your smartphone immediately communication goes to the uh, person who is trying to drive and they come so you say that uh, these are all the digital internet communication but they have some senses to communicate and uh, leverage those particular communication channels from one device to the another device so as soon as the note you get a notification your car has arrived your car has arrived once you sit down then immediately the notification currently it is through the code but the code notification can be then that the passenger has boarded the car it immediately starts a billing all these things are quite possible uh, which are pretty much there as part of the state of the art technology and what is really really driving this enabling this particular technology is you see there is a huge amount of rfid sensors uh, rfid tags which plays an important element in tracking the things sensors who is trying to collect the specific signals and the events which are happening in keeping the context in mind it tries to capture and communicate and smart technologies which is really empowering the networks to communicate with each other and the nanotechnology is playing an important role because the device economy is becoming smaller and smaller in nature so that it is having an opportunity to connect and uh, communicate and interact with uh, different devices in a different scale so uh, as the nanotechnology is emerging you can see that the size of the devices can also be Uh, significantly reduce and has higher potential and capabilities to perform some of the research groups which are uh, really embracing uh, iot and uh, working on the future of the iot are listed down here you can talk about mit auto id and epc global there are universities like stanford george and cambridge nonetheless to say that uh, within the india um all the possible iits and nit is also playing an important role in some of the research areas associated to iot and there is a specific standard research groups which are there uh, focusing on building the standards contributing to the standards of the iot some of them are evolved from the zurich like epfl and eth and like cabinets university also playing an important role and the industry participation is very very crucial and critical and how, the way i have mentioned here is the way they have started contributing right from the beginning of the announcement of the internet of things which has been emerged over the period of time uh, right from 2003 2005 onwards like nokia sap google microsoft uh, gg cisco all this playing a uh, very important role in uh, in the research aspects if you really look into this particular state of the art iot this particular snapshot you get the full view of the overall market potential now on the top left you can see uh, the top bucket which is about the uh, r and d research and division you can see many many uh, uh, research players which are coming in from the standard bodies uh, iso iec 18000 iso iec 14443 you can talk about all this uh, different industry bodies playing an important role in establishing the standards and there are investors who are coming and driving a lot of national invest initiatives which is making a bigger change in fact uh, one of the biggest consumer of the iot beyond healthcare is the military so military operations in usa military operations in india leverage iot based signal communications faster and there are universities which are participating to embrace these things from the production angle where you try to develop this kind of a chips uh, integrate these things provision the different use cases and make the things communicate are pretty much in high and if you are really looking into the market potential there are many many things which has been uh, put into practice now you talk about the pay pass which is used in the mcdonald restaurants probably definitely in the us it is there where you have the Uh, ability to use the paypass to pay your things uh, whatever you purchase within the mcdonald land without and you can pay it later it tries to track your entire thing right from the entry point it knows that there is a person with that kind of xyz history arrived and he knows um, it can be pre book your meals also one while you enter into the mcdonald because they know the history on of your purchases then uh, you can also see that uh, 
uh, the hospitals in Taiwan and China utilizes the wristbands which tracks. Now you you go to a hospital, you see the inpatients have what specific wristbands, like more mostly the paper wristbands. But in the uh, Taiwan and China, when the patients are admitted, they give a IoT based RFID based uh, wristbands which has an ability to communicate about all the possible things happening with the, that particular patient. Your wristband carries the entire your patient uh, records and history associated to it. If the wristband is available, you should be able to download every piece of the patient history associated during their admission and existence. So once the patient is discharged and uh, the entire data in the wristband gets reset accordingly. The Tesco is another retail chain operations. You can see that they normally currently do all the item level tracking using the RFID tag and they improve their supply chain management uh, to a great level. Felica chips, very, very popular chips. Uh, 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 now many more things which came through the payment wallet, but Felica chips were the first payment wallets which has been introduced in Japan, uh, really propagated and uh, uh, driven, the, uh, uh, driven the adoption of uh, the cashless transactions. And you see that the Great Duck Island in the habitat, uh, basically there is a experiment which is driven by the Berkeley University and Intel Research Lab. They came together and they were using the sensor technologies where they posted many of the ducks in a particular area and they started monitoring their temperatures, sensor controls, their behavior patterns, and accordingly they were trying to define the things. It's a very good uh, use case where they utilized it. So across the industries, you can see right from the conceptualization of the idea to the market, there are many things which have been evolved over the period of time and really, really promoted uh, the culture of acceptance of using IoT to the best possible extent. Just to investigate further or just to probe in further, I want to touch upon the specific use cases associated to the um, healthcare because our topic is on the bringing the healthcare view is important. Uh, so there was a specific patient generated health data today. You are trying to capture the massive amount of information into the uh, small, small chips uh, where this, where it allows the medical professionals to analyze the analyze and diagnose the problems associated to the health of the person uh, over the period of time, get a pattern of understanding, and they'll be able to communicate back with the right medication ahead of time in a very, very proactive manner. And such kind of an events which are getting generated or captured about any particular patient data is very much in unstructured in manner. And it is very much required for you to analyze this data at a faster pace, establish this pattern and derive a lot of insights about the patient health. And these are all possible when you try to keep this entire IO diversity econ economy, not only get the data, sense it, analyze it and respond back, uh, so that kind of a SAR framework, what I was trying to do, uh, need to help. But today you need to understand edge computing is playing an important role, supporting the entire IoT device economy to be uh, adopted and perform faster operations. Say I don't want a particular thing of data to be captured and sent to the cloud and then they perform and give me the insights. I want some capability which is near to me. So empowering such kind of a devices can play an important role whereby you will be able to gather this health related data and rapidly analyze and predict and respond back to the emergency systems. Now, in the case of the digital business crash, car crash technology you have seen, the smartphone has been acted like an edge device. It has been able to communicate, compute the patient, the person's uh, clots to investigate whether there is any damage. It is able to utilize the diagnostic, kick in the, the, kick in the uh, diagnostic service engine within the car to detect any kind of a damages. So anything, any devices which are locally able to perform that, it's kind of a edge devices. Anything which is locally performed at a nearby location, they are called as a edge computing methods. Or edge servers or edge computers, which really promote that particular thoughts. Here is a specific reference architecture. Uh, in fact, uh, this has been uh, very much practice within the company where I'm working uh, for the edge computing in the healthcare. Uh, so we have the full level of the uh, hybrid cloud infrastructure, which is supporting the store machine learning models and analytic behaviors where we can get a different insights. It is trying to connect the multiple 
hospitals together and they have each of the hospital has got a specific h end points or head servers to compute those things across the branch of operations utilizing the uh, uh, mpls network or uh, internet services we communicate all the uh, in, through the internet gateway or virtual gateway the communication so the possible insights of each of the patients can be analyzed faster faster and quicker and whenever the patient arrives doctor has an ability to analyze the pattern of the data and try to understand the insights which computer machine learning models are able to generate and take it for the further diagnostics and further medications to be instructed so this this kind of infrastructure is uh, really really enabling many people to adopt and embrace iot and edge computing coming together and converging together to solve the problems and similarly you see today many many use cases are evolving in the healthcare space especially the rural health medicine becoming a very prominent challenge to be addressed and in, there are many innovations which are happening in the telemedicine area where uh, touchless analysis can be performed using the iot devices you can think what the temperatures you know earlier you used to have a mercury thermometer to put into your mouth to measure it now nobody touches you they just flash it and you get the temperatures that there is a, a variable device which can help you to detect the temperature of the person by scanning it in the hand or putting it into your forehead you will be able to get it so there are a lot of differences uh, from the traditional angle there are many portable iot devices which has been coming to the existence and it has been empowered because of the nanotechnologies where the edge computing will have the ability to have communicate that particular data points to the edge computing servers which are nearby to analyze store and provide that critical insights of the patient data so similarly the wearable devices are also becoming much much more cheaper because the adoption is quite high and they will be able to constantly monitor and diagnose the uh, person's health on a uh, standard which has been defined so what it offers when you try to bring in the rural telehealth uh, medicines and uh, it, it tries to improve the overall patient experience and tries to make the things much much more simpler uh, in nature today if you try to look uh, many hospitals have uh, uh, leveraged this kind of a telemedicine operations and uh, they are trying to utilize educational programs interactive programs to promote the concept of improved health and improved health experience to be managed so its prevention is better than cure and iot device economy really promotes that and uh, take it forward and not necessarily only to speak and limit access to the rural health medicine but also need to understand the supply chain aspects you might be very very curious right whenever you are trying to give your blood test data or anything uh, you are looking for the kind of a report which are need to be coming in and uh, uh, and any uh, if you are asking for a particular medicines and you have placed an order to the pharmacy you might be interested to understand where it is currently lying down if you are booking for a lab test and person is coming to your home to take the lab test you might be interested to understand how much time it will take for him to arrive all these curiosity elements or the anxiety elements need to be proactively looked at there are tags associated with the rfid tags which can communicate and you can really it back to, to understand in the case of human involvement you can get to know what stage and where he is currently on the road so that you exactly can predict how much time it takes for him to arrive at your location if it's a variable device economy you have an opportunity to, to relay that particular data to the cloud analyze and predict what would be the next set of outcome and if there is a need for it to be proactively mitigated or from communicated to the right medical doctors it has an ability to communicate so such kind of an instances uh, can cross leverage the rfid tax uh, iot analytics global positioning systems cloud infrastructure and uh, over and above or uh, utilizing any of the uh, the pricing frameworks associated to the supply chain where we try to call it as a scor model supply chain operation research model uh, really help you to uh, utilize these things in a greater level so as we witness all this use cases you need to understand what is the key challenge in today's iot so basically you have a many of these devices which has been built in isolation they have a challenge to communicate with each other not all devices can communicate with every device so basically 
uh, there is a board a standard board is evolving to bring in that kind of a synergy for each of the device to communicate with each other but the key challenge is what you try to see is the privacy of the privacy and security of the iot device becomes a challenge and adoption and technology standardization is a challenge and the ability to monitor and govern these operations is becoming a challenge the only way you can start developing such kind of a controls is by ensuring that bringing in some kind of a governed laws with the help of the legal and regulatory authorities bringing in some kind of a ability to monitor and control any device which is there which should be legally authorized authorized and authenticated for you to get access follow some kind of a social ethical principles when you are trying to deal with the variable devices so that you are not misleading or misusing that information but you are respecting some of the privacy of the information and also ability to regulate if there is any unwanted data which is getting generated and getting utilized for a different purpose you need to have a ability to regulate that so this challenges can be solved and um, and many of these particular things are possible only through the two important activities one is through the right level of education second is through the right level of governance through the legislation as a medium to bring the change so you see the last segment which i'm going to touch upon is the future of iot uh, you see that every particular industry is trying to adopt iot as a game changer to try to take over the logistics associated or retail services and power control everywhere the optimization cost controls are becoming very very important and if something can be done with the device economy by communicating from machine to machine you have the really empowered devices to play a role and regulate the things in a much much more simpler manner and the use cases are prominently evolving and uh, emerging in each of these areas even from the customer citizen services areas medical services wearable services consumer buying social marketing lifestyle uh, building energy management financial services smart appliances you take anything you will see that uh, machine to machine communication human to machine communication human to think communication evolving over the time as well while we speak about these things uh, it's important that we start remembering three aspects of the next generation of iot three important laws if you start remembering that you will be able to make a bigger impact the way in you try to adopt the law one a device or sensor or service may operate in an environment if it can augment infrastructure basically what it tries to communicate is you if you are able to develop any device or sensor which can complement and understand the infrastructure under which it is trying to operate it will be able to embrace the things say for an instance i am wearing a wearable and uh, or i am holding a smartphone and i have some apps which are running in my smartphone if it has got an ability to know where i am whether i am indoor or outdoor and according to that information it tries to model my themes whether it is day or a night accordingly it will change the uh, the brightness of my phone so augmenting to the context augmenting to the environment augmenting to the infrastructure if you can do it uh, you will be able to have that device economy much much more powerful the law to propagates about device sensor or service must be able to learn and adapt in response to the environment as long as it is not conflict with the first law so we have uh, constantly propagating the thought right sense analyze and respond that is the sar framework what i always talk about if it will be able to sense analyze and respond and over and above creating the knowledge repository for itself to act whenever such kind of a event occurs what is the decision i need to make what is the action i need to make and it should not really uh, conflict because it need to augment with infrastructure if it as long as it is following that law to is working well the third law try to talk about a device sensor or service must have an obtrusive ubiquitous presence such that it does not conflict with the first and second law so ubiquitous computing is all about uh, trying to talk about the, the elements of computing could be from any device anywhere any kind we learned about any time any place anything communication connection and that is what is trying to ad advocate the thought that you you have the event generated at one location you can communicate to any other uh, cloud space to kind of analyze if you can if you do not have the local capabilities you can communicate to the edge computers 
uh, if you do not have the local capabilities, process it and try to uh, regenerate the insights to make it uh, make better, better decisions as we move forward. So that in a nutshell, which I wanted to communicate in the overall session, trying to bring you the different perspectives associated with the IoT related challenges and opportunities, and also bring in some specific healthcare views, which really make a remarkable impact in this entire journey. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to take it up. Dear participants, please ask any questions. Uh, or else you can uh, put that in the chat box. Sir, uh, this is Giri Rajan, yes, sir, Professor, can... Department yeah. of PCE. On behalf of uh, the queries uh, taken from the WhatsApp group, I can ask some questions. Uh, sure. How can how can be the IoT uh, get into the level of uh, product development and startup for the students' uh, contribution level uh, as a major project or any course projects? How can get, they take into IoT based projects and to take that level into the startup? See, first of all, uh, you should be convincing uh, uh, in your idea under which you are trying to work upon. So idea conceptualization is a starting stage where you see that uh, you try to define your idea and vision associated to the idea. And uh, say, for instance, uh, if someone is coming out with a, I want to, to capture the rural healthcare, and, uh, and he's trying to come out with a kind of a idea that there are many villages in India which can really utilize this uh, foundational screening. The telehealth medicine is becoming very prominent and also the touchless uh, health checkups are becoming very, very prominent. And if you have an idea which can bring in the mass adoption, it has got a higher adoption rate for the startup to succeed. So fo focus on theme of how your vision can be conceptualized Second, focus on how your vision can be mass acceptance will be provided or mass personalization can be done. And also try to uh, focus on how the overall cost elements which are involved in funding your idea. Basically, there are many organizations if they're interested in your idea, they'll fund. For example, uh, anything related to the humanitarian activities, any IoT related initiatives you are trying to do, we have an IEEE human act humanitarian activities committee inside, which funds your idea anywhere between the $1,000 to the $10,000. So as a startup, if you want to conceptualize and build a POC, you can write a proposal to them, get the kind of a funding, utilize that funding to develop and conceptualize your idea, take a video of it and send it to them. That's enough. They don't expect anything more than that. But once you have the prototype model, you can take this prototype model to the venture capitalists or you can leverage task or T hubs where you can position your idea. And if they see a merit in your idea, they will start getting the investments for your idea to evolve over the period of time. And that is the way you take from idea enlistment to the market positioning. But in order to achieve that, there is a necessary building blocks and foundational constructs required from the development standpoint. And uh, the development standpoint requires for you to develop the skills associated to the IoT related frameworks. And you should also have the understanding about the what kind of a IoT device economy I need to use uh, for realizing my idea. And what kind of um, storytelling I need to do, uh, which will help, you help in uh, building such kind of a use cases into my idea. And uh, so, so those are the important things which you need to really look at when you try to look from the IoT startups. And there are pretty many, many, many startups which are there. Uh, there are startups like Things Cloud. Um, there is a startup called Mobilio, Mobiliate, Trillbit, Peerbits, Numocity. Such uh, many startups are available in India which are primarily focusing on the IoT space and promoting that culture. 
So that's great. And I, I'm getting new about this uh, IEEE funding and let us go with that uh, along with the students' idea. So, uh, thank you very much for this uh, suggestion. I believe, uh, I believe in SR University, you have Syed Mustaq Ahmed, right? Yes, sir. Syed Mustaq has received a funding from IEEE for one of his garbage collector uh, related um, idea. Of, yes, sir. it was a small project and he got a funding out of uh, 150 or 250 dollars for it to conceptualize it. So, so he has got all the possible understanding about how the proposals to be made. You can leverage his local support to raise funds through the high tribune. Surely, sir. Surely, sir. So, uh, it's about uh, to give the thanks for every um, members in this event and. Uh, I'm Giri Rajan, Assistant Professor, Department of EC, SR University. For a word of thanks, uh, eminent speaker Sri Bala Prasad Pedigari, Chief Product Officer, Tata Consultancy Services, Data, Dr. Sandeep Patacharya, Head of the Department, ECE, Senior Professors and other faculty members, participants, good morning to all. On behalf of the department, I take this opportunity to thank our management, higher officials of SR University for supporting to Organize virtual power seminar on IoT in healthcare. And I thank ICT Academy uh, executives, Mr. Vijayan, Head Ac Academic Operations, Mr. Amarnath, Corporate Team, Mr. Shaikh Ghosh Pasha, Relationship Manager, for uh, collaboration and follow up to organize this seminar. My sincere thanks to the speaker, uh, Sri Bala Prasad Padigari, for his insightful speech about Internet of Things in healthcare and hope uh, this could be useful for the students of third year who are about to take their major project and added with that uh, the queries with the startup also it is added as a flavor in this seminar i thank dr sandeep patacharya head of the department for his constant support and valuable suggestions in organizing this event and taking the head taking the lead i thank the senior professors other faculty members of the department for their support Thanks to Lord Dr. Leo Joseph for uh, technical support and Dr. Sri Devi for taking part in the program. Thank to all the staff members. Last but not least, I thank all my students and participants who made the event valuable. And uh, I'm requesting all uh, the participants. One, and one, the, one minute, sir. One minute, sir. One chat box question is there from uh, one, uh, one student. Uh, what are the protocols and theories to be safe or best when connection of everything goes into an evil hand. This is the question. Yeah. After after this answer, let us join for the national anthem, and then uh, the session will be closed. I hope. Thank you all. Sure. So, can I can you get can I get the question once again? What are the? Uh, yes, sir. One minute, sir. What are the protocols and theories to be safe or best when connection yeah. of everything goes into an evil hand? So basically, there are uh, many standard IoT data protocols available today. The popular ones we normally use is Zigbee protocol, MQTT protocol. Uh, there is also like an advanced message queuing protocol and also data distribution services protocol beyond what we try to use uh, HTTPS and other things. Today, you see there is a protocol associated to the device to device, which is more for the smaller devices you use Bluetooth and WebSocket related protocols also. So all these things are enlisted as part of the ISO 18,000 and 14,443 uh, standards. You can leverage that. As long as you try to provide that, utilize this uh, data protocols and communicate, your data is pretty much safe. Most of the times we try to say that you should uh, utilize uh, the encryption methods to safeguard your data so that uh, no one will be able to intercept your data and trying to steal the things. And um, so uh, putting up a right encryption methods over and beyond these protocols can be of a significant uh, use. And uh, most importantly, I suggest when you're trying to transmit this data, do not transmit this data with the personally identifiable information. As long as you separate and segregate that and use the encrypted way to uh, link it to your personal identifiable information, you are always in a safe way of communicating. Hence, it is always a risk. Okay, hope that answers. Yes, sir.
Any other questions? So, Leo, sir, there is no questions from the chat box also, as well as WhatsApp group. You can proceed for national anthem, I hope. Okay. Have you started the national level? Uh, sir, uh, okay, sir, let us uh, close the session. There is some uh, audio, internal audio technical problem. Sir, uh, thank you all for making this seminar uh, valuable. Let us close the session with that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you.